Four more days remain in this Tour de France and you can watch them all live and on demand with every moment able to refocus on on GCN+. Plus. The focus was on from the start for the last and final high mountain test. Whatever the jersey, whatever the GC position, whatever the aim, whatever was left in the legs was going to matter. The general classification had changed quite dramatically since the time trial the day before. Polka dot jersey was the aim for Ciccone. The yellow jersey, not mathematically out of reach, but it was going to be difficult for Tadej Pogacar as they set out on the hardest stage of this year's tour. saint gervais mont blanc the mighty mountain in the distance. Courcheval and another mighty mountain to take on. It was the climb to Côte de la Loze, the highest point of this Tour de France at 2,300 metres that was going to be the difference. 24% near the top and plenty of King of the Mountains points on offer as well. Courcheval and it's Altipo, the destination. 28 kilometers, the final of four categorized climbs. The day didn't start though, as Tadej Pogacar was wanting. A silly crash, a touch of wheels in the opening kilometers. He looked okay initially and would carry on with a real fight for the breakaway raging on. Alaphilippe was wanting to be in it again. He was going faster than the motorbikes at one stage. Ciccone was up there fighting for those King of the Mountains points and he'd have a teammate with him as well in the shape of Matthias Scalmorza. The yellow jersey was never too far behind, but Phil Bauhaus was. He had to abandon the race after struggling early on. 100 kilometers to go and just 1 minute and 21 between a breakaway group and a yellow jersey group that were almost identical in size. Pale Bill Bau was up the road and threatening to move up into the top five in the general classification. Simon Yates in the top 10 and Felix Gau were there as well. All the while, Giulio Ciccone, the only one really interested in the King of the Mountains competition. An issue on the penultimate descent of the day for Egan Bernal would mean that he wouldn't be there to help Carlos Rodriguez in the finale. Everyone else got down the descent okay. And the monstrous climb to the top of the Col de la Loz began. 2 minutes 37 with 33 k's left. Ciccone wouldn't be involved in the shake-up for the stage, but he was likely to keep the polka dot jersey. Or was he? Because behind, they still had a chance. Then dramatic scenes. Tadej Pogacar seeding, Sepkus coming to the front, Jonas Vingegaard knowing that this was the moment he could finish off his rival and win the Tour de France effectively. Pogacar was half a minute behind when Felix Gal took off at the front. And behind, they were leaving the rest behind. Vingegaard on a mission. Still 2 minutes 43 from Gal. But the gap all the time growing to Pogacar, who was at almost 2 minutes here when there were 10 and a half k still to race. Simon Yates and Rafael Maika were trying to chase the race leader. And behind, chaos. More crowds, more motorbikes. One of the stories of the tour, and Vingegaard held up. He'd had help from Benoit, he had help from Kelderman, but they couldn't get up to the race leader. Simon Yates, by this point, the closest, 22 seconds behind Gal, who'd gone over the final big climb of the day and was descending. He had one little climb to the line to go, and that came inside the final few hundred metres. He got there with a gap. He was fighting to keep the gap. Yates could see him up the road, but it would be too much for the Briton. A Tour de France debut, a Tour de France stage win, a Tour de France top 10. What a race for Felix Gall and Azure de Citroën. Second place to a valiant Simon Yates. And Peyo Bilbao also moving up in the GC. The man behind him though, the yellow jersey, Jonas Vingegaard putting minutes into Tadej Pogacar and effectively winning the Tour de France barring incident or accident. Adam Yates still fighting to stay on the podium. Carlos Rodriguez fighting to stay close to him as was Jai Hindley. And almost eight minutes after Felix Gall had crossed the line 
Tadej Pogacar, the two-time Tour winner, came across, was consoled by his teammates, knowing that he would no longer be in the running to turn things around at the Tour. All the glory on the day to Felix Gall as far as the stage win was concerned. He won by half a minute from Simon Yates, one and a half from Peo Bilbao, and almost two minutes to Jonas Vingegaard, who would, of course, be the other headline grabber. A realisation when he crossed the line. Barring any incident or accident, he would win the Tour and Pogacar would have to settle for a podium place. Pogacar empty, telling his teammates he was dead on the radio. Jonas Vingegaard very much alive, very much kicking and looking every bit like the winner of the Tour de France. A whopping 7 minutes and 35 seconds, the difference now between first and second. 10.45 to Adam Yates, who has a nice cushion now on the podium of a minute and 16 seconds over Carlos Rodriguez. Yates' brother, Simon, is at just over two minutes behind him, fifth. But the tour's not over. There's always something waiting to happen around every corner. And the next stage is one that could be taken advantage of by any remaining sprinters. Either that, or maybe a breakaway. Starts in Moutier, finishes in bourg en bresse Two categorised climbs, small ones, but up and down terrain and a longer day at 184.9 kilometres. We think we know the result in terms of the GC, but there are still four stages to fight for and plenty more at the Tour de France, live and on demand on GCN+.